influence in three different oceans. I'll give you guys an example. See this river to our left? This is the Sinawatha River. And it flows up north. It flows up north into the Athabasca River, and then onto the Slave River, and then onto the Mackenzie River, so on and so forth. They finally make its way to the Arctic Ocean. Now, that's just one example. Um, the water here from the Triple Continental Divide could potentially go to the Pacific and the Atlantic as well, which makes it very special because that means the water here would flow all throughout North America. That means a lot of communities across North America, they get a little taste of this water. That's why it's very, very special for us. Now, if you look back to the uh, Samantha River, you'll notice it's kind of a funny looking river. This is because it's what we call a braided river system. Now, these braided river systems, they're always fed by glaciers, and as you know, when a glacier comes through the valley, it crushes many rocks and boulders in its path. And when the glacier begins to melt away, this debris will flow into the river here. And it will begin to build up some channels. And as water flows through these channels, they kind of resemble braids. Now since new uh, debris keeps getting dropped off every single day, these channels will change every single day. And uh, the river itself will look different every single day. And water will always take the path of least resistance. Now speaking about rocks, boulders, and debris here, you'll notice they're about to enter the shooting gallery. You'll notice within the shooting gallery because there'll be many rocks and boulders on either side of the road here. And these rocks and boulders, they actually come from the mountain on our right called Mount Wilcox. Now this actually occurs because of the freeze-thaw cycle, the number one corrosion in the Canadian Rockies. Now if you're wondering what the freeze-thaw cycle is, any wa uh, water would seep into the side of the mountain. It would seep in all these cracks and all the crevices of the rocks. And uh, while the water is uh, just chilling inside that mountain there, winter will come along. And as the uh, water freezes, it actually expands. So from the inside, these rocks would break, they would crack and push off of the mountain. And then uh, sometimes if the ice expands enough, these rocks would uh, pop out and uh, roll down the hill and shoot across the road with an apple momentum. Sometimes as fast as 90 kilometers per hour. That's actually why I need your help to keep an eye out. Let me know if you see any boulders coming our way. It's been about six days since my last accident, so I could really use the help. No, I'm just kidding guys. A lot of time, uh, Parks Canada is on top of it. They do scan this area quite often. They uh, hire them to survey the area once or twice a year. And about every two years, uh, they start scaling these rocks out. Uh, start chipping away at uh, some potential rock slides. So uh, we're safe in the best of the freeze thaw cycle. Uh, which they actually did uh, earlier this week. Uh, for two weeks straight, they've been scaling some of the rocks. So up ahead, you'll notice some of the rock faces look uh, pretty fresh because they've been working on it. And uh, that's actually the reason for the delays. But uh, you're in luck, they're near the end here, so the delays aren't that big. They used to be every half hour, you'd have to wait, but now we're probably going to wait like maybe two minutes for the delays here.